Would you like to see our very first batch of quail hatching? checking these eggs all day when I'm not working I've been upstairs working all day it's Monday Labor Day and um, I just now noticed that there's a little tiny pip it's so small that we had to use the Brian's phone or his camera on his phone to zoom in on it to see if I was just seeing things but it's definitely a pip so it's exciting It's so little. <laughs> Look at it. It's just this little thumb. <laughs> oh, he's rolling around. He's very small. Hi, Teeny. Hi, Teeny baby. Want to remind everybody of what we're hatching? Turnix quail. He's so tiny. He's like the size of my top of my thumb. <laughs> Little tiny boobas. Hi, Chick Chick. Tiny, tiny. Oh, he peeped. <laughs> I missed it though. I was gonna come down and put a camera on it when I thought it was gonna happen, but I didn't think it would happen that fast. He looks lonely, waiting for a few more eggs to hatch. Hi, baby. Waking everybody up. So which egg will be next, you think? tell because of the speckles. Yeah, I think it is a little. You know what I mean? Kinda it just see. looks a little off. Yeah.
ready to move the quail from in the incubator to a temporary breeder, brooder. Um, we don't want to take them outside right now because it's really smoky from the wildfires. There are more than a few of these videos that are being edited and posted out of sequence. When we had to deal with the wildfires, we decided to post those videos, the ones that were part of our wildfire evacuation story, ahead of everything else. These quail were hatching right about the same time that those wildfires were getting a little close to us. So I set up our old plastic tub brooder and I've got some, some food in there and some water. And so I'm gonna, there's still some eggs in here. So I'm gonna, but some of the chicks have been in there for, for 48 hours now, so I need to get them out. So I'm gonna try and be quick about grabbing a couple, shutting the lid and getting them in there. So, but we'll see what they let me grab. you in your water. I don't want to squish you. It's hard not to squish them. They are small. Uh -huh. Come on. Yeah, that's wet. Okay. You know that's water then? Okay, you can go under there. That's warm. Yeah, go under there. It's warm under there. <laughs> Let's just give you this. Oops. in there and get all wet and yucky. Come there on. we go. It's a little, little hopper. Come on. Take some water. Water. She likes the corner. <laughs> So much room they don't know what to do with it. The heat lamp? Mm-hmm. Oh, 
Well, I need to set it there for a second so I can figure something out. Maybe I can run a stick through here with this in the middle. Do you have like a metal pole or something? Tell everybody why we're doing the heat lamp and the chick warmer. Um, mostly because I've never done coil before, and the people I've seen doing coil online don't have these plate warmers. I really like the plate warmers, but I've also got this heat lamp that I got from Premier One that's got a nice safety net over it and things like that, but it's ginormous. So I'm hoping to see them going under their little mama hen heat plate, but we'll we'll see. Because I right now I'm what I'm noticing is they're all congregating under the light. But the idea is is that they're pretty fragile when they're a few days old, so I want to make sure they stay nice and toasty warm for the first couple days. So I'm gonna give them a heat lamp and we'll see how they do. I'm going to be putting my cable so you might not want to 